Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Stephen was a deacon in Jerusalem. They dragged him out those city gates to try and quiet him. When Stephen preached, those Pharisees started throwing stones. Before he died, he raised his eyes and saw Jesus on the throne. Said, you can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. You can silence the voices, but you can't stop the song. When the Spirit's moving, His will will be done. Can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. James was sent to heaven at the edge of Herod's sword, and Peter he was crucified like his beloved Lord. Yeah, the Roman Colosseum, the lions and the fires, the gates of hell did not prevail. They fan those flames high. But the work will go on And you can silence the voices But you can't stop the song When the Spirit's moving His will will be done And you can bury the workmen But the work will go on And then they lowered Jesus They laid Him in a grave They thought that it was over that his name would fade away But Jesus wasn't listening, no He rose to life again Cause God is not persuaded By the arrogance of man So you can bury the workmen But the work will go on You can silence the voices But you can't stop the song when the Spirit's moving, His will will be done. And you can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. And you can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. And you can silence the voices, but you can't stop the song. When the Spirit's moving, His will will Give me. 
Each and every one of you here this morning, we knew that several people would be not here today. We just need to pray that God will bless them as they travel. Several are sick. There's a virus going around. And uh, I talked to Brother Emmett this morning, and he's doing better, but he's still coughing. And he said, I would hate to thank you, bring it and share it with everybody. So I remember him. That's two Sundays in a row, and that's not Brother Emmett, so we just need to remember him in a very special way. Uh, time is waiting for no one. Uh, it's hard to believe that uh, we're almost upon the Easter season, and that made me think. Next Sunday morning, if you're up to it at 7 o'clock in the morning, there will be a sunrise service at the, uh, what they call that mountain, It's a Lakeview? Okay, right here in Ridgeway, yeah. Okay. Um, and if by chance it's raining, uh, we'll be meeting at the First Baptist Church in Ridgeway. So if you have a chance to come to that. Uh, and then next Sunday we'll be having our Easter program here. We'll have Sunday school probably till about the final bell. should be about 10 minutes to the hour. Uh, the children have some singing they're going to be doing. Uh, the uh, ladies have been practicing. Fear is a liar. Uh, the men will be practicing tonight. Uh, Red Letters, I believe, is the name of the song. We're going to go over it three times. James has assured me that it's a very easy song to learn and pick up, and we'll find out. These ladies, man, they have been hitting it for several weeks, and uh, uh, there's quite a few, so we're looking forward to that program. There will be an Easter egg hunt for the children after our service. I, For some reason, my daughter has allowed me or convinced me to not cut my grass until East, after Easter Sunday so we can hide eggs for Delilah. I walked out this morning, Danny, and I got grass, some of the grass is like that, and I'm thinking uh, I'm going to have to get a goat or something to... Uh, get that yard <laughs> leveled up. I uh, hope she has a good time because I'll pay a price for it um, after that. I also want to take time behind the pulpit and let Brother uh, Roger Hazel back there. He, I've been working him to death over at my granddaughter's place where she's staying, and uh, he has really made an improvement on that place. Uh, the fellowship was outstanding. You know, sometimes we, we fail to realize, just like our church dinners, <laughs> During the cleanup, that fellowship, 
you, you can't put a price tag on it. We just laugh and carry on and have a good time. Desire your prayers this morning as we go into the Word. Uh, the title may seem different, uh, but this is something that really hit me this week. Change the man, not the Word. Boy, you know, the Sunday school lesson today, there was bits and pieces that Sister Gail was getting on, and I'm thinking, wow, it's like we share notes. But we don't share notes. We, we share the same God, the whole Holy Spirit, and God moves in his way, right? Malachi, the first verse, Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Can't be any plainer than that, can it? I am the Lord, I change not. There's a verse in the Bible that says that I am the Lord God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. He was the same God to all three men. He was not a different God. What well, one man knew his, his father, his heavenly father, the other two also knew. God is no respecter of person. Amen? I'm so glad that I don't, you know, we have a book, a road map to follow. My Bible's down there right now. But we have a, a Bible, and there's an old time song, I'm using my Bible for a road map. You ever hear that song? It's the same road map for each and every one of us. Sometimes, if we're not careful, there will be people who will try to make their lives fit into the Word instead of the Word into their life. I'm glad that in the cover it doesn't say on Wednesdays this is what this verse means, but on Tuesday it means something else. It's not like that. Amen? The Bible talks about heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will last forever. One writer in the Bible says that Jesus was the word made flesh dwelt among us. And I'm so glad that I know Jesus as my personal Savior. He doesn't change. He's there with me every step of the way. James, the first chapter, verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from whom? The Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is a God that loves to get good gifts. Uh, little Violet, we had a birthday party here yesterday for her, and there she got some green, she got some money, and uh, she knew how to add that up real quickly. I noticed that. Six years old, right? And I thought, yeah, she, she got that down pat. Then they began to get bags, and in some bags, there had to be seven, eight items in there. It was like it was a never-ending thing. She kept on pulling out and pulling out. God is like that. He, he likes to give good gifts to his children. But the Bible says, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. And the more commandments we keep, the more blessings he will bestow upon us. God is faithful. God does not uh, tell you one thing and then do something else. You ever have parents t tell kids, if you do that again, I'm going to punish you. And they do it again, and they say, and if you do that again, I'm going to punish you. Well, the Bible talks about God is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. There is a judgment day coming for each and every one of us. Those of us who teach and preach we will give an account for what we say behind the pulpit or behind the podium. We want to make sure that what we say is Bible-based. The Bible says in the last days there will be wanting teachers having what itching ears. In other words, they want to hear what will make me feel good. Medicine, if you get sick, doesn't always taste good. Little Delilah had some sickness here a while back, and there was two types of medicine that Faye was giving her. One was bubblegum flavored. You think she liked that? Yeah, she liked that. And there was another, they didn't sugarcoat it. In fact, they had that little syringe and she put it in there and she took it in and she went, you know, 
but it was good for. You know the Lord will chastise those who he loves? There are some times through this word, as you read it, you hear it preached or you hear it taught, it will hit you and your mind will begin to wonder and say, Lord, that was for me. People have said in times past, well, that message got all over my feet. Well, it wasn't supposed to get on your feet, it was supposed to get in your heart. Because when it gets in your heart, it will affect the whole body. If it gets on your feet, you can shake it off. We need to realize that we serve a God that is the Father of lights. In Him is truth. He's the light, the way, the truth. And there's no variableness. You know God will love you in spite of yourself sometimes. You that are parents, weren't there times that you loved their, your kids in spite of themselves? They brought you great joy when they finally went to bed. I've heard parents say when I had my secular job, the only time when he is good is when he's asleep. That's a sad commentary. I would hate to think that God looks down upon me and say, well, the only time he is good is when he's not really concentrating on what he's doing. Now over in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Well, why wouldn't he be? He's like God. I change not. Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is my friend. I heard a, a, a concept by John uh, Revere when he first, we got into some of his first uh, lessons and books. And he said, there's nothing that you can do that will make God love you less. I had to chew on that for a while. And there's nothing you can do that will make God love you more. And, and Hank, I'll be honest, when that first came out, I, I had to take it home and chew on it for just a little bit. But you know, he's right. No matter what you do, God loves you. But now he may not be pleased with you. And there's verses in the Bible that talks about being well-pleasing in his sight. Now, if, if your kids, if you love your kids... You'll feed them. You know, uh, some of you that work with foster care children, my, my brother took in a, a two boys and a girl. And it was a sad commentary. The mother killed the father and had the kids drag the body out into a, the car and put it in the trunk to go out and dispose of it. And she picked up by the police. And three kids, and so my brother took in all, all three of them. But someone had told those children... You are, you are allowed to get three meals a day. And in the beginning, they reminded my brother it was time to eat. You owe me three meals a day. Well, you know, they were feeding them not because the contract said they were to get three meals, but because they loved them and wanted to feed them that many times, and even more so with snacks. The two boys got into trouble at school, and one of the boys said to the other boy, I'm going to kill you. Well, because of what happened to the father, they removed both those boys from my brother's house. They put them in a specialized place. And my, my brother said, please don't do that. Let, let all three be together. Brother's coming home one day, and he saw police and sirens and ambulance, and he, he pulled over to see what was going on. And one of the boys that they took was on a bike and got hit and killed by a driver. My brother said, he called me, he says, Bud, if that had just left them alone. You know, we can't play that game. We, we don't know what's going to happen. But Jesus will feed me today. He fed me yesterday. And guess what? He'll take care of me tomorrow. David had a relationship with God that when the Philistine came upon him, the Bible says that he ran. He ran towards him. He said, he shall be as the lion and the bear. He knew that God would protect him no matter what the situation. The devil will try to make you think that God does not love you and will not take care of you. The devil's a liar and the father of all lies. I look at my grandfather on my dad's side. I look at my dad, how God has blessed them and took care of all their things. They may not have had an abundance, 
You know, you know you are blessed when you are raised poor and don't know you're poor. I wasn't dirt poor, but I was not comfortable growing up by any means, and I didn't know it. The Bible says you learn to be content in whatever state you're in. There's something, there's something about that, Brother Curtis. And it's just not material things. God loves me. He loved my father and he loved my grandfather. Let's go to uh, the next verse now, please. Revelation says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Now remember, I'm saying you change the man and not the word. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, or of the book of pro this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. That's some serious things. If you add to it, God's going to add the plagues to you. If you take away from it, your name can be taken out of the book of life. Sin will not enter into heaven. When Jesus hung upon that cross and the sins of the world came upon him, Brother Jerry, the Bible says that Jesus cried out and said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's the word. Uh, there were some people. Uh, their name escaped me. I, I'm not a fan of theirs. But, you know, they say word. You know, in other words, is it the truth? Well, sure, the, the, the word of God is true. And if we start adding to it and taking away from it, we want to add. Uh, you know, there are some people that are great, fantastic cooks. And say, well, they want a pinch of this. Well, you know, depending upon the size of your fingers is how much you grab when you pinch it. But they know. I would never trust a cook who doesn't sample their own food. Amen and amen. We must be first partakers of this. We can't expect our children to be partakers of what we don't. Children, we tell them, eat their vegetables. But if you don't eat any vegetables, they're going to look at you, Sister Caroline, and say, well, why should I eat my vegetables? You're not. And the world will have this saying, do as I say, not as I do. We need to be an example of the believers in conversation and charity and love and all these things. This morning we were talking about the concept of paying forward. Where if you have been blessed, you bless somebody else in return. And you'd be surprised the impact it has upon people when you do it. When it's done to you. I, I, I told in class today how uh, it happened to me one time in a fast food place. A person in front of me paid for my meal. Didn't know who they were. A couple times I paid for those behind me. And I saw one man when and I was driving out and the lady told him, he just shook his head and he went. And who knows, maybe he was asking God, Do you still care that I'm here? Do you realize what I'm going through? And you know that four ninety five or whatever it was I spent, Brother Kenny could have been a multiple blessing to that guy where he reached out and got a hold of the true spiritual wealth that God wants us to get. We have untapped resources. We've been studying on Wednesday nights about the gifts of the Spirit, and they have been an untapped resource many times in our churches. And what happened in the early church can and should be happening today. Amen? You believe that it's worse today than it was back then in the world? I believe it is. And demon possession. I don't have any of this written down. It just crossed my mind. Got to the place that when uh, the apostles anointed aprons, is what they called them back then, that it would heal the sick and cast out devils. Think of that. Now, if you're sick and, and you get an anointed cloth, we still have those. And, but your faith reaches out. But if you have an anointing cloth to cast out a devil, the person who is devil-possessed does not have the ability to be delivered. They are possessed by the devil. You might say, oh, that doesn't happen today. 
I'm here to tell you, it's worse today than it was back then. You, you'd be surprised as we live our Christian lives with Jesus being the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. That spirit is supposed to be bubbling deep within us. It's supposed to be like a bubbling, overflowing well, springing up within our soul. Living waters, you know, we have that name, living waters. People need to know that God does exist, and he exists here. Next slide, please, Deuteronomy. Now, I told you before, I, I like to go back to Old Testament to pick out things that the New Testament reflects. What things soever I command you, observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. That just backs up Revelations. What God has said to do, observe to do it. And when it was talking about the Lord's Supper and feet washing, the Bible says, if you know these things, how are we happy? If you do them. The happiness doesn't come in the knowing of it. It comes in the doing of it. And where we have to be careful, this may be 2019, but this word does not change. What God requires for me to be saved, he requires back then when it first came out. Now I'm going to go to Matthew, the 15th chapter, 7 through 9. I said change the man, not the word. I spent the first part of the message talking about how the word is not supposed to be changed. How we're not supposed to add to it. We're not supposed to take from it. Now in Matthew 15, 7 and 9 says... You hypocrites, you did Elias, which is Isaiah, the prophecy of you saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their lips, or their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In other words, they were trying to change the word instead of changing their lives. You know, they, they had these tests. Uh, my, my little great-granddaughter, Delilah, I bought a, a thing in the yard sale, uh, 50 cents or a dollar. It's one of these little ball-type things, and it has these cutouts in it. And you open the ball, and all these little pieces fall out. And they pick it up, and they turn it around, and they put the triangle in here, and they put the star in here, and what have you. And uh, she'll bring it to me and say, do it. So I'll open it up. But there is always one piece is the last piece. It's the one that gives her trouble. It's like a triangle, but it's curved on the bottom. And when she'll see the image of the triangle, she'll go to the triangle. And after a while, she gets frustrated. She doesn't want to do it anymore. It doesn't make, it's no longer fun. But I'll say, honey, this is the one, and she'll have it backwards. I said, no, you've got to bring it around this way. Now she can do all of them, and she's not frustrated. See, she was trying to change the rules of the game. Well, I got them all but one, Papa. You know, she didn't say that, but that's what she was trying to relate to me. Aren't you proud of me? I was pleased. But, you know, I wanted to be 100%. Well, my life is almost surrendered to Christ. There's such a thing as almost but lost. If we're lukewarm, the Bible says he will spew us out of his mouth. I want to get to a place where if, if thus saith the word, then that's what I need to be doing. I don't want to be teaching doctrines of men, teaching doctrines, the commandments of men. We have our own thoughts. You know, opinions are like noses. Everybody got one, hopefully. Okay? Here, quite some time ago, I believe it was in Philadelphia, we started to come up with a saying, I won't give you my opinion, but I'll tell you what the Bible says. But I'll tell you what, if you make that statement, you need to know what thus saith the word of God. Because if you're not careful, you'll say, if you make that statement and then you put your own opinion into it, you have caused people not to know what thus saith the word of God. The Bible does, in one place, says you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's word. That's, that's gospel. But that doesn't mean... If you see something and you don't like it, it doesn't apply to you. I told this story before how in 
Nampa, Idaho, I happened to pick up a Bible that was on the front pew, and I picked it up, and I'm going through there, and I'm, I'm shaking my head. I'm going like this. And the pastor saw me, and he grinned, Brother Raymond. He said, I see you found the Bible. I said, what is this Bible about? It was a King James Version. But everything that they did not agree with, they took an exacto knife and cut out the scripture. And that Bible was full of holes. They felt if they didn't, as they was read the Bible, if it wasn't there, they were not held accountable. You know, the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into all truth. Revealed knowledge. We're studying the gift of knowledge in our Bible studies now. The gift of the revealed word will mean more to you than hearing a word. Well, you can hear things. Uh, I, I, well, I was in geometry class years ago, years, I mean, in high school, a long time ago, Michael. And Mrs. Grossheimer was a teacher. And she's writing up there the theorems and stuff. And she said, how many people don't understand? And several of us raised our hands. And she went through it again. Now how many people don't understand? I was honest. I raised my hand. Nobody else did. And the class was laughing. Now I know for a fact there was more than just me that didn't get it the second time. She said, now wait a minute. Back then she called me Franklin, my given name. And she said, now what Franklin is trying to learn something here, I'm going to go over this one more time. And Danny, for whatever reason, the third time it was like, oh, a light bulb went on. Now I understand. When it came time for the test, I made 100%. You know why? Because I understood. It was revealed to me. I, I had the concept. I knew what it was all about. Too many times, we don't really get the concept. Jesus died that I might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm to cast all my cares upon him, for he careth for me. These are some very basic truths that the devil will try to say does not apply to you in this day and time. You know that the Holy Ghost is for this day and time? There will be people that will tell you it was only for the apostles back then. Gifts of the Spirit, it was, it was back then. It's for now. Talking about the Holy Ghost and how we're supposed to receive it is, is for you, your children, your children's children, and as many as the Lord our God shall call. Don't try to make it fit you. You need to fit the Word. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. If your life hasn't changed after you found Jesus as your personal Savior, you might want to check and find out what you received. All things pass away. All things become new. Sometimes in those new things, it's, it's a trying. It's a learning process. It's something that Hank, we're not used to. We need to get to a place that we realize that God gives us instructions. I've said this before, putting kids' toys together. Hmm. Oh, how hard can this be? So simple, a five-year-old can do it. Uh, they must have a master's degree in engineering is all I can say. We got something for Delilah? Delilah? And Smiley and I were putting it together. And I, I knew my wife would say, are you reading the instructions, Brother Tom? I had it laid out. We're going page by page. It says to put this S1 bolt, and I got the S1, and I put it in. But for some reason, there was some guy laughing greatly who wrote the book. Because when we put the front wheels on and got them locked in, I turned the page, and they said, now put a little washer on the axle. Well, you just put the wheel on. You had to take the wheel off and put it on. Put the wheels back on. Flip the page. They said, now put this little end cap on this. You couldn't reach it because of the wheel. You had to take the wheel off. And I'm looking at Smiley. I said, now Smiley, you are a witness. I'm following the instructions. But the Bible tells me that the, there is a highway and a way. And a wayfaring man, though a fool, shall not err therein. Jesus loves us so much that if we just listen, his spirit will lead us 
and guide us into all truth. We should not be confused when these things happen. Next slide in Matthew. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. There is nothing worse than trying to cover up bad fruit. When I was in the Navy and aboard the ship, USS Newport News, uh, I like grapefruit juice. I, I really do. And they had these containers. You just hit it and grapefruit juice came out. It was a clear container. You could see it. And boy, when you drink it, your jaws are just that's good grapefruit juice. Well, then it came through. They had that for about three days. And all of a sudden, it was purple in there. I said, oh, grape juice. So I went like that, and I normally would chug one and then get another one for my meal. And I began to chug. And what they had did, done, they'd add grape juice to the grapefruit juice. You know, when your taste buds are set for grape juice, and that sour thing hits, I was going, you know, even though I like grapefruit juice, it was deceiving. When we don't tell people the truth, they have a hard way to go in life. Amen? We need to tell the people the way it is, speaking the truth in love. There'll be sometimes as you speak the truth in love, tears will flow. It hurts your heart to have to tell them those things. But we want to change the man, not the word. If we try to sugarcoat the word, if the Bible says, thou shalt not, I preached a message quite some time ago, uh, it's a period, not a question mark. When God says, thou shalt, then we are supposed to. If he says, thou shalt not, then we're not supposed to. Uh, people are trying, there, there are some major denominations that are uh, having internal problems because they're letting everything come in and say it's fine. I don't think the Word of God should be a club where we beat people, but it should be a written word, a spoken word, and a spirit-filled word. Let's go to Matthew now, 23rd chapter. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whiting sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are in, within full of dead man's bones, of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Dead men walking. Dead men walking. On the outside they look fine, but on the inside there is no peace. You know, uh, I, I preached one time quite some time ago about these plants up here. They look nice, but they're plastic. They're not real. We give poor Sister Betty. Now, I told Sister Betty not to... Listen to the tapes. I got some witnesses here uh, that she gives to uh, Juanita and Mary. I said, because I may preach about you Sunday. So, Betty, don't listen to this. Uh, she actually watered these things one time. Or maybe been a couple times. I'm not sure. But uh, it doesn't do any good. Water doesn't do it any good. You know, if you're plastic in your spiritual living, the anointed word will not do you any good. It will not penetrate the way it's supposed to. The Bible tells us to break up our fallow ground. There are some times we just need to reveal ourselves and say, God, here am I. The, the man that prayed, he said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. The Bible says he went, he went away more justified than the other guy. Let's go to 2 Timothy now. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. We need to change the man. His word will last forever. His word is true. It's, it's powerful. That word is sharper than any two-edged sword. His word will penetrate the very thoughts and the intents of your heart. Brother Curtis, if you get ready, please. Mark, the second chapter, in verse 22. And no man putting new, putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine does burst the bottles. And the wine is spilled... And the bottle will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. We're asking God for a revival type atmosphere. That we can win souls for Jesus. But the man has to change. Not the word. 
when that new anointing comes, it got to be put into new bottles. I become, need to become that new creature in Christ Jesus. The world has a saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. We need to become new dogs, allowing God to bless us abundantly. You know, if you treat your pets with love, Sister Gal, you were talking about Bella, I think's her name. And I'm thinking all those times that we look at our fur children and we just baby them, and feed them table scraps, and do this, that, and the other thing. But you know, there are people in this outside world that are like the thieves that fell upon them and they were beaten and left for dead. I saw something on the internet the other day. And it says, if you have been blessed, lengthen your table, don't build a fence. Now, I'm not going to get into politics here, but I thought, you know, if I'm blessed locally, people need to see that I'm blessed. You know, the Bible says what you do in secret, he'll shout from the rooftop. That's not necessarily just meaning all the bad stuff we ever do. I've seen people highly blessed of God. Brother Kenny, I knew they had been faithful, that God had blessed them abundantly. It was evident. Little children, our sacrifice and our offering to Him does not have to be a great painful thing. I guarantee a little Delilah, this year or next year, can pick a weed, a dandelion, and give it to my wife and say, Granny, I love you, and it will mean more than if I bought my wife a dozen roses. Why? Because it's so innocent, so thoughtful. And you know, God only wants us to love Him. He doesn't want us to change His Word. He wants to change us. I'd like to have a stand at this time. If you're here and you have a need, may His Word change you. Don't let, the, don't let anybody try to convince you to change the Word. Let his spirit change.